Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here, working on the Virago 1100. Working on the 1100 air filter box. I actually already did this, um, we call it the modification. I did it quite some time ago, way before I had my U uh, YouTube tube. So I wanted to, hey YouTube tube, try saying that 10 times fast. Um, but I want to show you guys what I did. Um, I want to pass this information on. So I took my air filter box back off my bike and disassembled it for this video. Um, I drive or ride a Yamaha Virago 1100 and you can do this to any one of the Yamaha Viragos, any single one of them. The problem is bad airflow through the box. Now I I had to rejet because I did the exhaust and I did the air box at the same time. Okay, so um, the back side of your air box looks like this. This is what it looks like right here and your air travels through here on the back side that's not really the problem okay there's enough real estate here for air to travel through so what exactly is the problem with the air box you ask well let me i'm going to move this out of the way so i have more room to work okay um this is from my 92 yamaha virago 1100. this is here's what your air box looks like i have a bunch of these so I'm able to use different parts and pieces to show you what exactly, like see I already have one apart. So anyway, this is what we're looking at, we're working on right now, the air filter box. And on the intake side, this is where the air comes through and there's not much to it. This air filter has been eaten by mice. Um, it's a junk filter and I don't even like that style filter. The paper filter um, kind of restricts it all. So. I'm going to unscrew the screw, so I'm going to pause you for a second. Okay, I'm going to try to get out of the light here so you can see. Um, actually, that's a really good uh, picture of it. These um, channels right here is where the air comes in. Okay, and as you can see, that's all you're getting for airflow through this air box. That's it. You see how big the hole is in the center? That goes into your engine's intake, and those little tubes... I removed the back of it, you can see. Look at this. It's got one little square here. This is my thumb. I can only fit one and a half thumbs through here. And the same thing with this side. One and a half thumbs. Actually, if you go like that, it's one and a quarter thumbs. That is not much airflow through this box. That is piss poor airflow right there. Okay, so you want to wake this bike up. You want to get you want to get air flowing through this motor. You cannot do it with this air filter box. This air filter design is used from '86 all the way up to uh, the newest one that I think is '98 or 2000, something like that. Uh, and you can do this modification to other bikes as well. Keep in mind you may have to rejet. I had to because I changed my exhaust and I put the exhaust on it that has the same diameter pipes as the front and back of the same. So I had to put matching jets where your bike would normally come with a 122 in the back and a 125 jet in the front. So I got two 125 jets and it's running perfect. So anyway, um, this is piss poor airflow. So what did I do you might ask? Well you see my cutters and you see my Dremel tool with a side grinding bit. And I got a flat file, a round file. Over here, I have a pencil, a drill bit, um, a small handle um, hacksaw, the tools to remove it, and a Phillips, okay? I'm going to show you what I did. This is what it looked like originally. I'm going to hold it here for a second, take it all in. Boom. Okay, now I'm going to move that out of my way. And I'm going to do a comparison to what I did. Oh, look at that. Look at the real estate coming through that, huh? Look at that. Nice and wide open. Woo, that is a lot of real estate right there. Look how much airflow I have. My air coming in meets the air going through the engine. See that? Yeah. So what I did was... First things first, I wanted to go with the older style air filter. This is the style I like. I like the foam filter. It breathes easier, and you can spray it with oil like the K&N's. It's got the nice little seal on the back of it. 
and to modify it to take this 1985 air filter all you have to do you see this little wall here this little spacer this little um, flat spot sticking up you got to take that off right there I took it right off nice and flat smoothing it out okay so then I started with my air filter I took my air filter and I put it into place it's got the little round I don't know if you can see it. Sorry about the lighting in here, guys. See the round part that sticks off of it? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to install this onto my air box so you can see it. So I'll be right back. Okay, I didn't screw it in. I just wanted to put it on this so I'll show you. Then I took my handy-dandy pencil and I traced out everything I could get rid of. Okay? So I wanted to get rid of the maximum amount of plastic that I possibly could get rid of to allow as much air in there as possible. And then what I did is, I don't know if you noticed or not, I left myself a little bit of a margin here. Okay. I left myself a little bit of a margin. You can see where I cut that off. The screw holes all line up with the old, the old style air filters, which is really, really nice. And then I got that all opened up. So what I did was, on the back side, take the air filter back out. I cut off the tubes completely. The tubes are completely gone. Yeah, here. All that, these tubes, these runners are gone. But I kept the bank for the air filter. Because you need this piece right here in the middle here for your air filter screw. All right, to hold the whole thing together because you have two screws to hold the air box together down bottom here and up in here right there okay so that right there holds the two the holds the front cover on and if you cut that off you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to be able to put it's going to be a floppy it's just gonna be a mess so i left the whole structural part i don't think you see it or not i left the whole structure right in place pretty cool huh so it's strong. I mean, you, you can't even move it. It's strong. So I, I cut that off. I left that in there. You can see how I did it on the side right here. I just took my saw, cut down it, and got rid of all that real estate. To cut this off, I used my, my hacksaw and basically just slid it down and cut it to um, make things go a little quicker. I use my cutting wheel on my snap-on grinder and cut off a lot of real estate. Just basically took a lot of it off with that. I used a drill bit in the corners. So I, I didn't want to crack anything, so I drilled a hole on all the corners. And if you drill the hole, you can't you you won't crack the plastic. Okay? Keep that in mind. So once your hole is drilled. You just basically cut up to it and I used a pencil to trace it to where I wanted to cut it and that's how I came up with getting rid of that whole thing so basically what I ended up with is an, a wide open air filter assembly that could suck in the same amount of volume going out which is very important that is nothing that is that is piss poor airflow I mean it's just awful they don't make an air filter box for these, and I like the style of it. I mean, it works factory. Why not get more power out of it? So I went from the pleated paper filter, which is just shit, to the older style air filter, which is a foam filter, and it flows more air through this and still cleans well. I haven't had any issues with those air filters, and they are readily available. And then basically, that's it. That's all I did. So, I hope this helps you out. I did leave um, on the back side of this, when this is all together, I, I left my whole air filter assembly together. I didn't um, drill holes in the front. You can drill holes in the front here, in the chrome, but the problem with that is, now when you're going down the road, you got water coming in from the rain, okay? This still draws the air through the back, okay? And while it's drawing the air through the back, you're not going to get water in it. 
and that's a nice thing. So it's going down the road. The air filter is still sucking air in, but it's able to suck in more air than than it would normally with that other style with that right there. And you're still protected from water, so you're not going to get water in it. Um, I am going to tell you this. When you put your bike away, you're going to want to pop that off, the air filter assembly, bring it in the house, and put a plug over your um, intake hole because mice are now able to get in there a lot easier than that. I use mothballs in mine. Um, they seem to help, and mice don't like the mothballs. But um, last year, I took my air filter in and just put a, I used to use a uh, piece of duct tape and just plug the hole and no problems so um, it's easier that way and if you want to use some spray fog which I also used in mine it helps if you uh, take the air filter box off you run the engine you spray the fog into the carburetor until it dies and then you drain your, you, you drain your carburetor bowls and all your fuel out your um, your bike will start up just fine the, you know the following year but I'm gonna do a video on that when it gets closer to the time I'm going to show you how to properly fog an engine and uh, show you how to drain the cobs and show you how to prepare for the winter. So I have a few other things to do on the uh, bike. Um, I got some projects coming up um, on my Yamaha and one of them I will show you. Okay, and I also have this going on. This is an oil filter relocation kit. Um, this is not for the Yamaha Virago. This is um, for the um, oh the Star 650 or whatever the heck it is. Um, the bolt pattern on the filter and the bike took originally took the same filter as mine. Um, this right here will bolt in its place, but there's a little piece of um, of aluminum that has to be cut back on the side cover, so. I'm going to uh, be doing a video on how I did that and how to do it when I install this and I have to order some uh, longer um, oil lines but these are high strength uh, stainless steel braided lines for high quality and it has a chrome oil filter which coincidentally takes the same one as the Harley Davidson's and um, just a regular screw-on filter because you know how changing your oil filter on these things are literally a pain in the neck. So this is the oil filter that I'll be using. It is a chrome one. They, When you get the replacement, they'll come black. But I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay. So the original filter style is this right here. It's the uh, Fram CH6004. And uh, made in China, of course. Why wouldn't it be, right? So this fits underneath this cover. However, we're not going to have this in there anymore. It's going to be an open cavity, and it's just going to flow through this right here, through the lines, into the oil filter, be filtered, and go back in. But this thing adds a couple of cool features to it. By installing this, this allows me to get one of those oil filter coolers. It looks like some fins and it goes over the filter. It slides over and it's got coolant fins around it as an oil cooler. I can also put a T on the line and put an oil pressure gauge. So there are some other possibilities that I can do. I can machine this plastic um, aluminum here to be bolted anywhere I choose on the bike, which is pretty badass. So I have some options and I can use other mounts too. I don't have to keep this. As long as I keep this set up right here, I can put any type of uh, oil filter mount I want to on this thing. So keep that in mind um, when you're doing these bikes that you don't, you're not stuck with that, that POS filter. You can get a, uh, and I'm not saying that filter is made POS Lee. It's just a pain in the prick to change. I'd rather put that on the side there. Have a nice chrome piece on the motor, which it's already chrome on there, but one I don't have to worry about. And I don't have to worry about taking my pegs off my side just to do a simple oil change. Now, with this setup, I can just go onto the bike, take a 17 millimeter, drop the plug, drain the oil into a bucket while it's draining, take off my filter, lube the seal, put the new one on, 
by that time I get all that done, the oil should be out of it. Put my plug back in, fill my two quarts of oil, three quarts of oil, whatever the hell it takes, and then be on my way. And I can be in there and out of there, and, and realistically, by the time you clean up and everything, 20 minutes. As opposed to an hour, pulling apart the peg system, the, all my linkages for my, you know what I mean, it's just a pain in the neck. Then you got to reach all the way on the other side of the bike because the bolts are through bolts on one of them. It's just a pain in the neck. This system right here is going to make it a lot easier for my Virago. So, um, something to look, look forward to. Look at that chrome on it. Gorgeous. So, that's my next modification to the bike. So, I figured I'd do the photo modification. Look at that. Look at that right there. Look how awful that looks. There's nothing there. Look at it. There's nothing. My system, I get a whole bunch more air in it than you can possibly imagine. And mine cuts all the way down to here. It uses all this. It's all opened up. There's no more. The whole back is a funnel. The whole entire back now is an air intake. You still have to go around the tube, but it's still an air intake. And you can take this plate and you can cut it and modify it. You can cut it back and get make it even faster. But honestly, when you're pumping that much air into it, I mean, look how open that is. That is really, really open. You're getting double, triple the amount of airflow through this um, good air filter box. My style. So let me get that over here so you can look at that. You don't want to, you don't want to look at that. That's garbage. You want to look at this. Here we go. I'm going to tip it upside down for you. Look at, I'm going to put it up against the wall so you can see the, the airflow. Look at that. That's awesome. And that's how I did it. And then, on this side over here, and basically, once again, all I did was take my air filter I chose, I stuck it on. They do make a can and air filter, but let me tell you something about the can and air filter for this bike. You can put a can in if you want. But you're going to get the same amount of performance with the factory older one. It's got the same airflow. So, I'd rather save myself 30 bucks and go with this than put a key in then. Some people just like brand name stuff. So then put a brand name in there if that makes you happy. Whatever floats your boat. I prefer water, but that don't work for everybody. So, yeah, look at that. I'm going to pinch it down so you can see. Look at that. Look at that. The airflow into the box is absolutely enormous. So basically I have this whole side filling the sad box up. The whole box. I can even modify out back here if you want to. But the only downside to out back here is like I said, is the water. I really don't want to mess with the water side. And you have these vents right here for the breather. I really don't want to mess with any of that. I figured this is enough. I've got a match. I've got enough CFM coming through to match the hole for the air filter. If you measure it all out, put them all in a circle. I may, I might even have more. And I just I use my file, the fly file. You can see my file marks. You know it's not the prettiest thing ever, but nobody sees the backside anyway. And when you got that chrome cover on, nobody's going to even know you did it. I sand it down the wall so it makes it nice and smooth. So it's nice and flat. I shave my edges so no plastic is going to go into the in, into the end box. And I kept my, my mount. Make sure you keep your mount. And, I mean, look how, much, look how much I did. I took off, even down bottom there, where on the factory, it's all blocked up. See that? That's crazy. Mine is opened up. All that's gone. All the way around. And I got rid of that little piece right there. That's all I did to modify it to fit. Now say you left it the same way. You didn't want to cut your air filter box, but you wanted to take my advice and use that, that filter. All you gotta do is cut that little tab off. That's it. Do one thing. The air filter is the same size. It's opened up huge in the back, just like the other one. See how opened up that is? Take this one in here. I'll show you. 
It opens up just like it. Actually, I think about it. The round one actually is opened up more. So right there in the front, it's opened up. It's opened up more. Huh. Look at that. That's even a better performance filter. So keep that in mind. If you have the paper filter, go with the foam filter from the 85. Look for that one. It's got the two springs going across of it. It's a foam filter. And that's it. So that concludes the uh, my air filter box. So I'm going to throw it all back together and... Uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. Throw it back on the bike. I just figured I'd take it apart and show you guys. And, um, because I talk about it all the time. And, um, I'll put my money where my mouth is and I'll show it to you. So that's what I did. That's what I used. Make sure you keep your hardware safe. And, um, as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, by all means, please send them my way. Um, I really appreciate the, um, the opportunity to do this for you. So, um... I can uh, help you guys out with your bikes and hopefully get these things. This is a cheap performance upgrade. You're going to benefit from it. You get more engine, more air into the engine. My bike is extremely fuel efficient. I love my bike. So it's nice to be able to do performance upgrades cheap. And um, if you can do something like this right here. It's going to save you some money in the end. And you don't have to jet if you're just doing the air box. Because you're using the same air filter. This is going to restrict the air. But if you're doing other things like I did the air filter box and I did the exhaust. So I had to rejet. Um, but you shouldn't have to rejet with this one here. This should be just a, a do it and have a nice day with it. Um, I can't imagine you'd have to jet because you're not... You're keeping an air filter on and you're not changing the physical design. You just open it up so it can breathe a little better. You are going to change it. You are going to get more performance out of it. But I think you'd be okay with your jets that are in their factory. Um, if you put a supercharger on, then obviously you'd have to put a, you know, definitely have to rejet. But um, where you're not putting holes in the front of this thing, if you put holes in the front there, where it would be like a ram air. Um, you would definitely get more performance out of it. But you're going to ruin your air filter box first off, and you will most likely have to reject because now you're forcing air in. This is still naturally aspirated, and you will notice a difference on the power. So I think that anything more than this, you'd be rejetting. I think this right here would probably be the end limit on that before rejetting. So as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like, and please share. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to do this for you guys comments questions by all means please send them my way and um if there's anything i can do for you please let me know thank you guys for watching